Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, when a man deeply loves you, loves you, he'll say or do these things. <laughs> All right, really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Really quickly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis, and based on the questions you ask, I shoot personalized videos just for you. Just for you! <laughs> so check out the link below to my VIP group called Midlife Love Mastery. All right, we're going to talk about what men say when they're deeply in love with you and what they do when they're deeply in love with you. Before we do, though, I want to address something that I've noticed. Well, I mean, everybody has noticed what I'm about to share. And I believe men and women are rather um, miserable with the dating, mating, and relating process that exists today. And I think it's important to discuss this because before you ever can be in a relationship with someone where they actually genuinely deeply love you, you actually have to make that happen. You have to, two people have to meet one another. And we are in a rather dysfunctional world these days, which makes it difficult just to meet somebody that actually shares your values, whose lifestyles is blendable with you, and who has the emotional maturity and the relationship skills to actually be in a relationship. Not to mention the desire for chemistry, that desire for physical attractiveness. And so, you know, and because of these devices, because of these dating apps and such, where's the dating apps? <laughs> Bumble, here's a dating app, for example. It's made it increasingly hard to connect with people on a real heart-centered level, on a real emotional level, on a real organic level. And you know, for the longest time, I've been the biggest advocate for online dating, and to some degree I still am, because here's the reality of it. Whether we like it or not, roughly about 50% of all new first dates are happening through an online connection, and that probably is going to increase for those that are no longer in an environment where they're surrounded by single eligible people. I want you to think about people in college. You know, they, they're all congregating together. They're usually most likely single and most likely eligible. So there's this, you know, depending on which college campus you're at, there's a good chance you can meet someone. But then when you move out of college, you know, it's interesting, my son, after he moved out of college or moved, uh, or moved back home, you know, his, his, dating, uh, his dating pool dropped dr substantially. I mean, they went to a school with 30,000 students and literally there was no one right in front of him anymore. And he actually had a little bit of a withdrawal after that period. My son now is 25. So I bring this up because I think this is a really important topic to address beforehand, how are we going to meet that partner that genuinely deeply loves us, that, that wants to lean into a healthy, happy relationship? And because the dating process is hyper-focused on chemistry and romance, I'm going to repeat that, hyper-focused on chemistry and romance, it oftentimes misses the more important things that are needed to be to addressed in the relationship process. And that is, as I said a moment ago, shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity via relationship skills. And it's difficult to know. And by the way, there's this grand assumption. I mean, it cracks me up how many women and men just assume that that's a given if there's chemistry with one another. And we have learned over and over again, if you follow my channel, that intense chemistry oftentimes leads to intense disaster, intense um, pain, because there's this hook of, of dopamine and serotonin and testosterone and estrogen and oxytocin. And 
and yet it brings two people together and yet if they're not able to stay together when that when that relationship ends it can leave a a real emotional hole within a person this is why why i wrote my book what the heck is self-love anyway here's a copy of the book by the way there's a link below to all the books i'll be recommending today this is a journey of personal development self-help and spiritual work so it's like a vaccination to emotional chaos because the reality is most humans and particularly women this is going to sound a little judgmental this is but my perception is many of you women are operating from the premises i need you to love me so i can feel good about myself i need you to love me so i can feel good about myself i need you to love me so i can feel good about myself we are suckling on that nipple and I'm here to invite a different narrative. That's why my channel continually recommends over and over and over again different books to read to shore up your emotional health so you're not so dependent upon a man in a relationship for you to feel good. And also I give you the tools with a variety of different books to actually prepare yourself for that guy. And by the way, the men have to be doing this too, ladies. I'm here to, any man who's watching this, you should be reading the books I recommend. You should be doing the inner work that I recommend to do that personal development, self-help, and spiritual work so you can actually lean into a healthy, happy relationship with someone that you actually deeply can love. Men are thirsty for this too. Both men and women are thirsty for Connection, companionship, copulation, coitus, whatever you want to call the, the other C word for sex. And yet here's the distressing problem today. We are living in an environment where there's no commitment needed to have sex with someone. I repeat that there's no commitment needed. By the way, I can't, I'm shocked at how many women will have sex with a man, have sex with a man, that there's no agreement of monogamy or exclusivity. Listen, I, I, I'm afraid of cooties, okay? Like, I ask women up front, if we're going to be intimate with each other on a regular basis, I'd like it to be monogamous and exclusive. I address that right in the beginning because I want to make sure that they're not sleeping with other men. So why aren't you doing that? Because you're feeling fear. You're afraid that this one person that you've put all your eggs in the basket, if you speak your truth, they're going to want to run away. Ladies, stop stifling your voice. Stop stifling your voice. If you read my book, chapter nine says, if, you know, if it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Ladies, you should be speaking up. Communication is critically important for a relationship. And you all talk about this. You say this over and over again. How important is communication? How important is communication? And yet you're like this when it comes to expressing yourself because you're afraid that the person's going to run away. This is why I recommend these two books lately. Couples Guide to Communication, Couples Communication Guide, and How to Build Trust in a Relationship. Because trust is what's going to, trust is what's going to make a man deeply love you. Trust means you can count on each other. Trust isn't about fidelity as much as it is. Can I count on this person? And let me tell you the reason why this isn't happening. And there's an, there's an irony here because I'm wearing my t-shirt that says friends. And you can see all the different quotes from friends. <laughs> pivot, pivot, pivot. How you doing? <laughs> What's distressing lack of what I'm noticing today in the dating process is two people genuinely becoming friends with one another. Because again, as I said earlier, there's a hyper focus on chemistry and romance and not enough attention built to or addressed in the building of the friendship. And let me tell you how friendship is built. First off, it's doing stuff together. By the way, my weekend videos are supposed to be my calmer videos, and I realize I'm in my passionate, intense moment here, so let me bring it back down. How is friendship built? It's through doing things together, social activities, hobbies, mutual interest, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, going on hikes, going on walks, going to do events. It's not built over the telephone. 
You can maintain some level of friendship through the phone, but many of you are spending more time on the telephone with someone, and that's a false sense of a false sense of intimacy. Intimacy is built through the doing things together. But Jonathan, I'm in a long distance relationship and we can't do things together. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to really build that deep roots of trust, that bond that's actually gonna make a man deeply fall in love with you beyond the sexual piece. And I talk about this before, ladies, if you haven't read the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. Read this and read this with a man before you sleep together. This will actually help build the intimacy between the two of you is talking about what you both want. Stop being naive to this. Stop expecting the man to be the leader of this. You were in charge of your relationship, Destiny, not the guy. But Jonathan, all the feminine energy coaches tell me to let the man lead. Ladies, are men really good leaders of a relationship? I got to tell you something. All the happy ma couples I know, the women are literally in charge of the relationship in a healthy way. They are in charge of the social calendar. They're the, they're the, um, they're the social concierge of the relationship. And that's, what, that's why I know so, I personally know so many happy couples. And I will tell you, these are women unafraid to speak up. And they're unafraid because it's, they're not caught up in the gender rhetoric. All the gender rhetoric is one of the reasons why you're miserable in the dating process. If you want to change your narrative, read the book, If the Buddha Dated. If the Buddha Dated, it throws out all the gender rhetoric and says, how can we connect at a soul level? How can we connect at a heart-centered level? How can we connect at a friend's level? So in a moment, I'll share with you those uh, things that men say or do. Really quickly, my mug says to say, just keep swimming. <laughs> this was a gift from one of you beautiful folks out there. Thank you so much. I, I am so grateful for all the kindness, love, and care you send out there. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And by the way, if you're finding value in this right now, please hit that like button for me. Please share this with your friends. Please post a comment. I'd like to get a discussion going on this. Because ultimately, if you want to be in that relationship where a man deeply loves you, he'll say or do these things. So I'm going to put on my trusty glasses. We're going to pull up our notes. Whoosh. All right. So one of the things, I'm going to give you some examples. When a man genuinely cares for you, start to pay attention for these things. Does he start using we language? when you talk. And by the way, let me be clear about this. This is well after the heightened chemistry phase that you might experience. This is for those couples that are actually starting to move into a more significant, they've spent significant time together. And I just said they use we language. So I want to just differentiate because guys who use we language in the early stages of dating, that's usually to copulate. That's usually to get coitus, okay? <laughs> That's usually just to get sex. I'm talking about after you've slept together a number of times. What does a man demonstrate? He starts using we language with the two of you. Hey, we should go do this. Hey, let's, let's, we should, uh, it's either we or us, okay? We or us. But he oftentimes says we. And again, this is after there's been sex and it's been a, seasoned, starting to become a seasoned relationship. He'll start using we language. Now, by the way, this isn't a guarantee or an absolute. I know that plenty of people will use we and then still break up, but these, what I'm about to share are good signs that it's moving in the direction of a fully committed relationship. And number two, he knows when something's off or bugging you. He, know, he can feel your energy. When a man can feel your energy and he's asking, he's just checking. He might say, can I check in with you? Are you okay? Checking in with you because he recognizes something feels off. And I don't mean that you're stomping around with resting bitch face. You know, I'm talking about there's a subtle thing that's off. A man who genuinely deeply loves you will recognize that and he'll lean into it. Men who are not in love with you or men who are avoidant will, when they notice your mood is off, they will go the other direction. Or needy men will do the opposite. They'll start going, do you need something? 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 
By the way, think about it. You do the same thing, ladies. So this isn't singular to men. This is both men and women alike. When they're in a needy mode, they want to fix right away. And when they're in avoidant mode, but a healthy, secure male and woman, male and female, checking in, something feels off. Are you okay? And it's an opportunity to communicate. Again, ladies, you talk about the importance of communication, and yet so few of you oftentimes are afraid to speak your truth because you believe that he's going to run away. That's not how intimacy is built. Intimacy is through the conversations. If you need some help with that, I highly recommend checking out this book, I Hear You, The Surprisingly Skills Behind Extraordinary Relationship. Check this book out. It'll save your life. It will literally save your life. It's like a, a life vest <laughs> if you fell into the water deep out in the ocean. By the way, can you see the ocean there? <laughs> All right, number three. He pays, attentions to, pays attention to your needs. He pays attention to your needs. He will say things like, I'll get that for you. I was in a relationship with a woman. I'll give you an example here. I was in a relationship with a woman. Why am I crossing my arms? I'm just a little cold. Uh, I was in a relationship with a woman and she had two big dogs and, um, you know, I knew that, um, she would, or she would purchase dog food and they were 50 pound bags or maybe 40 pound bags. And, you know, I realized, you know, she was doing it by herself. We had just started dating and I eventually went to the store on her behalf and would go buy the dog food for her. I say, I'll get that for you to make her life a little bit easier. When, and by the way, you do the same for a guy. You know, when you recognize something is off or, or, you know, he needs something, you go, I'll get that for you. That's what couples do when they genuinely start loving each other. This isn't rocket scientists. You know this. But I just want to give you some insight into how men operate when they genuinely care about you versus the men who don't. They're not paying attention to these things, probably because many of you are in relationship with guys where you barely see each other. It's more of a hookup casual relationship instead of something that's growing together. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And number four, he starts doing the things that you do. And I'm going to give you an example. I've shared this before, but um, not but. And I was in a relationship with a woman and every time we went out to dinner, she wanted to yelp the restaurant just to read the reviews. And she did this for Amazon purchases, everything. She reads the reviews. I never did that. But, and then we started to do that and it gives us some insight into the restaurant or things we're going to purchase. Well, now I start to do something that she does or she, well, this is a former relationship. But my point is when we're in relationship with someone, we start to take on their habits, their, their, um, their way of doing things, not always, but just enough. And it becomes very, you know, it's, it's really saying to your partner, I accept you for who you are. I appreciate you for who you are. And that's a great example. And last but not least, he invites you into his life, his family, his friends. He's progressing the relationship forward. He wants you to be part of his life. And those are great signs. And again, I said this before, be careful of it in the beginning, beginning stages. If a guy uses we or he introduces you in your life and he tries to do things for you, remember, that's when a man is in the hunt mode. He's hunting, he's hunting. I'm talking about afterwards. So as my mom always used to say, you know what, I used to take what you're, in the beginning, I took what your father said with a grain of salt. Again, I'm not talking about the beginning stages. I'm talking about once you start to establish a relationship with one another. And the reason why it's becoming increasingly hard to get there is because folks, today we are meeting total strangers. We're to, meeting total strangers. And I want to wrap up with the idea of reading this book, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell, what you should know about the people you don't know. Folks, if you want to build a deeper relationship, then you're going to have to ask better questions and you're going to have to start paying attention because here's the problem. We really don't know someone. It takes at least 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to get to the first layer of trust, the first layer of trust, the first layer of friendship. And then there's another 100 to 200 hours for the next layer, another 100 to 200 hours for the layer after that. It's going to take, I mean, it takes a good six months just to get to know someone at a base level. Sometimes it takes years to get to know someone. I know a lot of you have been in a relationship where you realize after 20 years, you never knew the person. 
because you went in blindly, you went in cavalierly, you went in naively. And I'm here to say, it's time to do it a different way. Can you do that for me? <laughs> All right, I think you get the gist of where I'm going. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. Let's get a discussion on this. What do you think of my shirt? What do you think of my mug? <laughs> And we're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love. Here's a teddy bear. Because let's face it, hugs are a great source of love and we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.